Hello there, my name's Heido and welcome to the Pantheon, where today we're going to have a look at one of the brand new face commanders for the Commander 2021 collection. Quite a cool little doubling themed commander. Adrix and Nev, there's two of them, twin casters. Four mana, which is pretty okay, we've got a bunch of ramping green, and if he dies, we can, or they die, we can bring him back pretty easily with the amount of mana we're going to be making. He has Ward 2, which means uh, whenever this creature becomes the tag of the spell or ability, an opponent controls, counter it, unless that player pays 2. And, if one of our tokens will be created under your control, twice that many tokens are created instead. Nice cool doubling season effect. Finally, it's a 2-2, but thanks to Ward, you know, our opponents, they're going to be reluctant to target this guy, even if someone is playing like a lightning strike or something like that in Commander, which... Honestly, isn't all that likely. But quite a cool commander. We're going to be playing a lot of token synergy sort of cards here, you know. And, you know, when you've got a doubling season in the command zone, why wouldn't you? Which brings me on to number five. And in at number five, we've got Skyclave Relic. A three mana artifact with kicker for three. Which means you, when you cast this, you can pay an additional three and you get an effect. It's indestructible. When it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, Create two tap tokens that are copies of Skyclave Relic. Tap to add one mana of to your mana color. Bleh. Tap to add one mana of any color. This is really, really cool. Obviously, mana rocks, you're gonna to want to play them, it accelerates the game. But if we have six mana and we cast this, we're going to be getting four token copies. So straight away we've ramped ourselves by five just through this one card. Which is really, really cool. And it's something that I think is important, you know. Yes, we want to increase the amount of tokens we create in terms of creatures, but there's a lot of ramp sort of synergies that we can have here. Prosperous Pirates is a 5 mana 3-3, three, three, I think it is. When it enters the battlefield, create 2 treasure tokens. So we're going to create 4. So for 5 mana, we've then got a 4 additional mana. Really, really smart. Sailor means 3 mana for a 1-4. When it enters, creates a treasure token, so we create 2. And finally, Pirate's Prize, four mana, draw two cards, create a treasure token, so you create two. All of these, you know, they accelerate your mana, so if you're playing a lot of big spells, these are the sort of things you want to put in to help you catch up, you know. It really, yeah, treasures only last, you can only use them once, but in Commander, if you get a big acceleration in mana, you're generally going to win. To go along with this, Treasure Map is a two mana artifact. Pay one, tap it. Scry one, put a landmark counter on treasure map. Then, if there are three or more landmark counters on it, move those counters, transform treasure map, and create three colors treasure artifact creature to tokens. They're not creatures. With tap, sacrifice, add one mana to my mana cut. 20. I can't talk. My mind is fallen to pieces here. But on the other side of it, it's a land that you can sacrifice a treasure draw a card. So when it flips, you're going to have six treasures. So massive amount of ramp from a nice little card selection tool there. Spell Swindle, five mana for an instant, counter target spell. Create X colors treasure artifact tokens where X is that spell's converted mana cost. So obviously you get double of them. So if you can to say an Ula Mog, you're going to be getting 22 counters. Uh, really, really powerful. Finally, mechanized production, four mana for an enchantment aura, enchant artifact you control. At the beginning of your upkeep, create a token that's a copy of Enchanted Artifact. Then, if you control eight or more artifacts with the same name as one another, you win the game. Works excellent with our treasure sort of theme. And if you wanted to go heavily into the artifact sort of synergy route, this is a really cool win condition that you could put on anything, you know. Um, some kind of golem or something like that that comes in, destroys something. You can get absolutely tons of them. Which brings me to number four. And Azuri's Predation is an excellent board wipe, which works fantastically with our commander. Eight mana for a sorcery. For each creature your opponent's control, put a 4-4 green beast creature token onto the battlefield. Each of those beasts fights a different one of those creatures. So we're going to get double the amount of beasts, and they're going to fight the thing. So if our opponents have a ton of 1-1s, one we're just going to end up with a bunch of 4-4s, because obviously our 4-4s four will kill the 1-1s. One and they stay alive. This is really powerful. And these sort of effects are what you want to be doing. Something that creates a whole load of tokens, 
So our commander doubles that and creates a, another whole bunch of tokens. The rest of the Endless Web and, and Coma Cosmos Serpent are very much incremental value on each of our opponent's turns, but we're going to double that amount of value. So Rasta is a four mana of four, five, I think, with reach. Whenever an opponent casts an insta sorcery spell, create a one, one green spider creature token with reach. So obviously our opponents are gonna cast quite a few instant sorceries. And we're going to get double the amount of tokens. Really quite cool. Coma Cosmot Serpent is better, <laughs> but it does cost seven mana. So it's six, six, can't be counted. The beginning of each upkeep creates a 3-3 three, three blue serpent creature token named Coma's Coil. Sacrifice another serpent, choose one. Tap target permanent, its activated abilities can't be activated this turn. That includes lands, so you could ice someone out in their upkeep, tap all the lands so they can't cast anything. Or oh, you can sacrifice one to give Coma indestructible until end of turn. So you're going to be getting two, you can tap down a bunch of things, or just amass an absolutely massive army. This is much better as it doesn't rely on our opponents casting instant on sorceries like Arasta does, but it is seven mana. Finally, Nakatl War Pride is a six mana, which you can see down the side there, it's not been covered by Coma. Cat Warrior. It must be blocked by exactly one creature if able. Whenever it attacks, put X tokens into play tapped and attacking where that are copies of Nakatl War Pride, where X is the number of creatures defending player controls moves as tokens from the game at end of turn. So when it attacks, you get as many creatures as your opponent has, but with our commander, you get double that. So there's no way our opponents are going to be able to block all of the three threes, and it will just smash in for an absolute ton of damage. And it's a cat warrior, which is always important. Arachno Genesis is a three mana instant. Put X one, two green spider creature tokens with reach onto the battlefield, where X is the number of creatures attacking you. Prevent all combat damage that will be dealt this turn by non-spider creatures. Fogs are always very underrated in Commander. This can absolutely blow your opponent out, and we're going to get a metric ton of spiders. It's a horrible image to think about, but if it wins you the game, does it really matter? Arcane Artisan is a 3-mana 0-3. Terrible stat line, but got some cool abilities. Pay 3 and tap it. Target player draws a card, then exiles a card from their hand. If a creature card is exiled this way, that player creates a token that's a copy of that card. Then, when when it leaves the battlefield, exile all tokens created with it at the beginning of the next end step. So, this is a nice instant speed way to get a massive token. But with our commander, obviously, we get two of them. So, if we're playing massive creatures, this can get us two of them. Yes, we have to protect the Arcane Artisan, you know, with our exile clause, but we can make a ton of different tokens. Finally, Tender Shoot Dryad, Five mana for a 2-2 two, two with a send, so you need to control 10 permanents to get that effect. At the beginning of each upkeep, create a 1-1 one, one green sapling creature token. We're going to create two, and then that is going to power us to get a send if we don't have it. Saplings you control get plus two plus two, as long as you have the city's blessing. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Makes an army and then pumps it so you can attack your opponents to death. Which brings us on to number three. Spawn Sire of Ulamog. Now, this is one of the big creatures that you could potentially, you know, make co copies of with Arcane Artisan, but this is such a cool card. 10 mana for a 7-11. Excellent convenience store, has a bunch of different things in it. You can buy hot dogs, you can buy sandwiches, all sorts of things. Also, has Annihilator 1. So whenever this creature attacks, defending player sacrifices a permanent. Then, the main reason that this is a cool card for this commander, Four mana. Put two zero one colorless Eldrazi spawn creatures onto the battlefield. They have sacrifice this creature, add a colorless to your mana pool. Then you have a 20 mana ability. Cast any number of Eldrazi cards you own from outside the game without paying their mana cost. Now, this actually doesn't work in Commander, but I strongly recommend you ignore that rule and just say, yeah, if you've got a bunch of Eldrazi, 20 mana, dump them onto the field. Wonderful, wonderful. You just end up winning the game. It's great. But the four mana ability. So with our commander on the field, we don't get two, we get four, which means we can sacrifice all four of them to get four mana, which means we can pay this again and create it and create a loop where we get infinite sacrifices and activated abilities. 
Why would we do that? Well, Fasundity is a three mana enchantment. Whenever a creature dies, that creature's controller may draw a card. So with this loop, we're gonna be sacrificing a bunch of tokens and drawing an absolute boatload of cards. Really, really, really quite good. Then why not play more of these sort of things? Because the ramp that you get from this, yes, this is a nice little combo where you can draw your entire deck, but all of these spawn tokens, if you just pay that four once and you get four tokens, and then next turn, you've increased your mana by four. So the ramp is exponential. Kozlok's Predator is a four mana three, three. When it enters the battlefield, create two zero one color cell draws spoke tokens. So we're gonna make four. We've paid four mana for this. We're gonna get four mana back next turn. Woo! Allows you to cast all your big Eldrazi or whatever you want. Brood Monitor, very similar. Six mana, three, three. Enters the battlefield, but it creates his Eldrazi Scion tokens, which are one ones, but it has the same sacrifice, add a mana ability. Growth Spasm, cool little ramp spell here. Three mana, search your library for a basic land card, put onto the battlefield taps, then shuffle your library. You put a zero one Eldrazi spawn token onto the field that sacrifice your mana. Obviously you get two. So for three mana, you get two, uh, well, two little tokens that you can sacrifice for mana and one land. So you've increased your mana by three for three mana. Really quite cool. From beyond, four mana for an enchantment. It's devoid, so it has no color, means nothing. Um, well, it does, but it, ignore it. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a one one colorless Eldrazi Scion token with sacrifice a creature out of mana to do mana bill. But you can pay through it to sacrifice from beyond. Search your library for an Eldrazi card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. So you could search up uh, one of the big titans or Desolation Twin. 10 mana for a 10 10. When you cast it, put a 10 10 colorless Eldrazi uh, creature token onto the battlefield. So you, with our commander, you get two of them, obviously. Or it, every one of these brood monitors, Eldrazi drone, sponsor of Illumog, all of these are also Eldrazi's, so you can search them up as well. Which brings me on to number two. Back from the brink. Really, really cool card from Innistrad. I love the artwork, the fact that he's just sitting there sort of chilling. Wonderful. Six mana for an enchantment. Exile a creature card from your graveyard and pay its mana cost. Put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of that card. Activate this ability only any time you can cast a sorcery. So, all our big things are died. Well, let's make token copies of them. So, our commander doubles everything that we've got. All of these big dudes are now doubled. Another couple of things that do this. Bramble Sovereign, four mana for a four four. Whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield, you may pay two. If you do, that creature's control creates a token that's a copy of that creature. So we end up getting three versions of that uh, that creature with our commander. Really, really cool. Very, very powerful. Cackling counterpart, three mana for an instant, creates a token that's a copy of target creature you control. Flashback for seven mana. So the fact that it's an instant allows you to just do that whenever you want, you know, on your opponent's turn. Say you've got a Venser or something like that on the field. You cackle and counterpart it. You get two Venser's, bounce two spells or two permanents back to their owner's hand. Finally, Aaron of Eternity, triple blue, double X. Sorcery. Exile X creature cards from your graveyard. For each card exile this way, creates a token that's a copy of that card, except it's a 4-4 four, four black zombie creature token. So, obviously, we're going to get double of them. Nice little bit of reanimation. And making your creatures into tokens is really, really powerful. Especially if you can do it to your commander. But Parallel Lives is such a powerful card. And our commander wants to double everything. So why don't we just double more? <laughs> Quadruple, you know, octuplet, whatever. You, you, you end up with tons and tons of value. These effects, they're the reason you're playing this commander really, aren't they? And why not play as many of them as you can? Parallel Lives, four mana for enchantment. If an effect would put one or more tokens on the battlefield under your control, it puts twice that many tokens on there as well. Exactly the same text as our commander, but it's on an enchantment. Doubling season, again, exactly the same. Uh, five mana. If an effect would create one or more tokens under your control, it creates twice that many. And it also has the added ability of if you put counters on a permanent control, it puts twice that many counters on that permanent instead. So both of these Planeswalkers here, both these mini Jaces, the, um, you know, the three mana Jaces that aren't the original. Both of these are really 
interesting with token sort of synergies. So, Jace Mirror Mage is a three mana, three loyalty? I don't know, four loyalty? I can't remember. With Kicker 2. When it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, creates a token that's a copy of Jace, except it's not legendary, and its starting loyalty is one. So, with our commander out and, you know, doubling season and parallel lives, we'd end up with God knows how many copies of this little Jace. And his abilities are plus one, square two, not very impactful, but zero, draw a card, reveal it, move loyalty counters equal to that card's converted mana cost. So if you've got a bunch of them, you can set up a bunch of scribes, set up a bunch of draws on the other ones, and, you know, it's a bit of fun, really. Jace couldn't cast away. Three mana for a Jace Planeswalker with three loyalty. Whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, this turn, draw a card and discard a card. That is little plus one. It's minus two, create a 2-2 two, two blue illusion creature token with when this creature becomes the target of a spell. Sacrifice it. So, a bit of token synergy, you make two of them. Ooh, wow. The main reason we're interested in, minus five, create two tokens that are copies of Jace Cunning Castaway, except they're not legendary. So, we can just make an absolutely metric ton of Jace tokens. So, with our commander out, we get four of them. With doubling season out, we can get eight, I guess. And if we add parallel lives, we get 16. I, I, I think that's how it would work. M main point is, you get an absolute ton of them. They just they just spill out onto the field. And then you can minus two a couple of them. Get, you know, it just all spirals out of control. To go along with this, here are a couple of other things that can spiral pretty well with our commander. Giant Adiphage is a 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven with Trample. And it's a massive insect. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, creates a token that's a copy of Giant Adiphage. So those tokens, if they, they then deal damage, will create more tokens of Giant Adiphage, and it just spirals exponentially. Reef Worm, four mana for a zero one. What a stat line there. When it dies, creates a three three blue fish creature token with, when this creature dies, creates a six six blue whale creature token with, when this creature dies, creates a nine nine blue kraken creature token. So, it just gets bigger and bigger. The army just keeps growing exponentially. And, and the maths is, if you're into maths, like I, I used to really love maths. I've grown up and don't anymore. But this is the sort of card for you, which brings me on to Helm of the Host. Four mana for an equipment. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a token copy that's a copy of the equipped creature. Except it isn't legendary if it was legendary. The token gains haste. <coughs> now, if you put this on your commander, it's just going to spiral out of control. And it's going to be utter madness. So if you want to subject your friends and yourself to those mind-numbing sort of headaches of trying to work how many tokens are created by each thing because you've got 25 versions of your commander, then go for it. It's going to be horrible to deal with and i commend you for that and those are my top five cards for this brand new commander it's really quite cool if you like doubling things these guys are your commanders i guess next well, not, well riku's probably more powerful but this guy he, these guys whatever they are they just do it for you for free so thank you very much for watching i hope you've enjoyed it and please subscribe Bye.